Hey, what's up everybody? So today I want to start talking to you about diminished vocabulary. I myself have actually always found diminished vocabulary to be kind of tricky. And what do I mean by that? I mean, where do we throw in diminished chords in a harmonic sequence and have it sound good? What are some different diminished voicings we can use? And on top of that, what are some really awesome diminished licks that we can play around with? So we're going to talk about all of that in this series. And today, we're going to start with diminished licks, which can be really, really fun. So to just begin our basic conversation, we're going to look at the diminished scales really quick. So let's start right there. So there are, of course, two different diminished scales, okay? One is called whole half and one is called half whole. Why are they called that? Well, whole half literally begins with a whole step and goes whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, and back down. Let's one more time. Now the half whole diminished, as you can probably guess, is going to be half step, then whole step. So half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, and back down. So it's really interesting to think about this, right? Why is it that these simple patterns can work to form a scale? Uh, no other scale is really quite like this in that it's completely congruent in terms of how the intervals line up. So it's pretty interesting to think about how this scale can just work with this basic alternating pattern, right? That's how the scale is formed. And the reason is because it's built essentially around minor thirds, right? And that right there is a basic diminished seven voicing in C. So this pattern is actually really simple. We're just always moving everything around in minor thirds. So because of the consistency of this pattern, I'm not sure if you just noticed this, but our C diminished chord is essentially the exact same chord as our E flat diminished. We just take the C from the bottom and put it on top. And then it's essentially the same as our G flat and A. So these are really all just the same chord, just being inverted over and over, right? The same is true of the scales. Um, a C diminished scale, let's do half whole, is exactly the same as an E flat. The only difference being where it starts. So why is that important and why is that actually pretty awesome? Well, it means that we can come up with these really interesting licks that are completely consistent, just going up in minor thirds, right? So we can come up with these really fun, interesting sounding patterns. And I say specifically patterns because they are literally exactly the same just moving up in minor thirds or moving down in minor thirds. Now I just want to do a quick shout out to my PDF that's available in my store, jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store. If you want to check it out, it is full of these types of diminished licks and patterns for you to practice. And I think you'll really enjoy it and get a lot out of it. So make sure to check that out. So what does that actually mean for us? Well, it, it essentially means there are only three different diminished keys in a way. So what I mean by that is we have C diminished, which accounts for all of these, right? It counts for C, E flat, G flat, and A. Then we have D flat diminished, which accounts for D flat, E, G, and B flat. And then we have D diminished, which is D, F, A flat, and B. Beyond that, we're just, now we're just at E flat, which is a repeat of C. So it's kind of cool Unlike other scales, unlike other patterns, you kind of only have to learn these in three different keys. And then after that, you can basically do them in every key, just depending on where you want to start. So now that we've gone through some of that theory and why the diminished vocabulary can be so fun and easy to use, 
Let's look at a couple cool licks. Let's look at the two licks that I just played for you before. So these licks, diminished licks in general, I find are not only useful for diminished chords, of course, but also for when you're playing a dominant voicing, especially when it's a five chord. To get even more specific, they're the most useful when it is an altered chord, meaning there is a sharp nine or potentially a flat nine as well. Why? Well, let's take a look at a C7 and then let's play the C diminished scale. Half whole diminished has this flat nine in it and a sharp nine in it. It even has a sharp 11 in it. Now let's look at a C altered scale. Very, very similar sound. So we can use diminished patterns really, really well on altered chords. Okay, so pattern number one, let's take a look. Cool, so you've probably heard this one before. Um, it has been used by improvisers in the past, and I think it's really fun. It's a really cool sounding pattern. So let's, let's get a little more deep into it. So we do one, two, four, C, D flat, F sharp or G flat. Then we go two, one, four, or two, one, five, whichever you prefer. E flat, E, A, so. And then two, one, five, right? F sharp, G, C, and then A, B flat, E flat. And that's basically it. And then we just do one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. However, if it's easier for you, you could actually just do one, two, four the whole way up. You don't necessarily have to do this two, one here. I just personally like doing that. It feels natural to me. So as usual, practice this slowly. Try to take it up multiple octaves and down. Here is lick number two. This is a really fun one. So our fingering for this pattern is gonna be one, two, five, four. Here I do two, one, five, four. Two, one, five, four. One, two, five, four. And then we do the same, but down. One, two, five, four. Two, one, five, four. Two, one, five, four, one, two, five, four. All right, guys, I hope that you found those looks really fun and helpful. Of course, again, if you want a bunch of other awesome diminished looks and patterns to practice, be sure to check out my PDF. Um, I'm gonna put up a link and a picture of it here in the video. The link is also in the video description. Thanks so much for watching guys. As always, if you found this helpful, please be sure to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell to turn on notifications. See you next time.